Get ready. It's time to have some fun. Coming to you from KDKA TV Studios in downtown Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh Today Live. Hey. Yeah, we're already having a good time, right? Oh, yeah, it's always a good time <laughs> yeah. with you, Mikey. <laughs> so, I, so we're so glad to be here. Um, in case you missed it yesterday, we're filling in for David and Heather. Yep. And uh, we were preempted yesterday uh, by the CBS news coverage. And so we revealed Pittsburgh Magazine's Pittsburgher of the Year. Yeah, this yeah. was a big deal, and and we were, I'm sure a lot of you caught it yesterday when we re-aired at one on the CW or online, but we were thinking this whole time, who could it be? There were so many options, so many people were commenting on social media, but the answer? Wait, you did a drum roll I did, yesterday. I did, I did. Go ahead, I'll give it to you. There we go. Max King. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so he was revealed as Pittsburgh Magazine's 2019 Pittsburgher of the Year and well deserved too. Yeah, and Max King, he is the president. Actually, he just retired from the Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Foundation and he came to Pittsburgh in 1999 from Philadelphia where he had been editor of the Philadelphia Inquirer to lead the Heinz Endowment. Um, and then he ended up leading the Pittsburgh Foundation and he, he did so much for them, raised so much money and um, he's just really a good guy. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And he was co-chair of the River Life Task Force, and that was the group behind the waterfront mm -hmm. renovation, director of the Fred Rogers Center, and then, yeah, he did so much with the Pittsburgh Foundation, and this was actually, I think they said, the third time that he has retired. <gasps> He has a hard time, as you can imagine. He's <laughs> sure. been a busy man his entire career. So it's cool that he's actually not even originally from Pittsburgh. Uh, but he has established his home here, and he still resides in Squirrel Hill. Mm -hmm. And so I was reading up a little bit about him this morning, too. And um, he's just a great guy. He is. Once you move to Pittsburgh, you're a Pittsburgher for life. I, Mikey, I totally agree with that. Yeah. So, but um, he's, he's a popular guy. Yeah. But, you know, there's, there's something else that's really popular. Have you heard of this? Black Christmas trees. I have not heard of this until you told me about mm -hmm. it because you see the white Christmas trees everywhere. They're very popular. I love white trees. I think they're gorgeous, especially, you know, how you could decorate them. But the black trees. The black Christmas uh, this trees. This is interesting. Well, apparently now it's the second most popular color for artificial Christmas trees in Washington, D.C. and a number of other states, including Arizona and Indiana. And it's trending on Twitter. It has like uh, hashtag black Christmas tree mm -hmm. has 10,000 post on Instagram. Yeah, I was on Instagram this morning and I was looking and I couldn't believe how many there were. I, I must have, I'm just behind the times here yeah. because I didn't realize this was such a big thing. It's a big thing and they're so chic, especially you have the, the black Christmas tree and then you can put like white bulbs yeah. on it and it just makes it look just so... I agree Something about it. Black is my one of my favorite colors. Yeah. Black and <laughs> Me white. Me too. Yeah, so I would I think my main tree I would always like to have a real main green tree, mm -hmm. but I think it would be cool to have little ones throughout the house too. Oh, so, I would like so you to do, do like multiple Christmas oh, yeah. trees. My mom does. But yeah, maybe someday I would do a white one here, a black one there. Well, you hear that? Selena's <laughs> gonna have like ten Christmas trees next year. All right. So if if you if if black Christmas trees don't impress you or don't fancy you, how about an upside down Christmas tree? Uh, yeah, I, I, that's a new tell thing. Tell me more, Mikey. It's a new thing. <laughs> it's a new thing. Yeah. And so you might think that this is something new, but apparently this has been happening. I think since like the seventh century. It's upside, upside down, down Christmas trees. trees. Yeah. And so okay. it was adopted maybe in like pagan religion and then then slowly moved over to uh, Polish tradition and they would hang the Christmas trees from the ceiling mm -hmm. um, to save space. Like if you lived in a really small right. living quarters, you would save space. But now um, it's still a thing. And even mm -hmm. with uh, shopping malls, they have adopted this a lot because they can have more room for merchandise and more oh, room for yeah. people to shop. Okay. Yeah, and even I guess even if you wanted to do an upside down Christmas <laughs> tree next year, Selena, you know maybe maybe your dog wouldn't get the tree I because was, it's hanging from the ceiling. I was thinking mm -hmm. if your dog or cat. If I know a lot of people have problems with that with their pets at home, right? And this would be a way for them to have 
no option to do that anymore. The upside down Christmas tree. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, I, I said yesterday I was so excited to get the opportunity to co-host with Mikey yeah, because we haven't too. done it yet before no. this week. And we, we do miss Heather and David. Yeah. And we know they're hopefully at home watching us. If so, hey, Heather and David. Hey, guys. And they'll be back next week. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited to get this chance with you. And I consider you to be a great friend Aww. since you started here almost a year now, by almost the way. Almost a year. You've almost been I know. Year, year. Time flies, but I consider you a great friend, too. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because yes. a recent study finds that women do better in life just yeah. pure, just when they have a strong group of friends. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Did I, you? Well, I always suspected that because yeah. you know the, it always says something when you have a really core group of friends, a solid group of friends. I feel like it, it adds so much to your life, but it, it, there are so many studies that we found out by looking at it this week that it actually does lead to a more successful life in a, a many different ways. I agree. A, a study uh, published in the Harvard Business Review found that women are more likely to get leadership positions mm -hmm. with higher pay and also women with, now this is just according to the study, women mm -hmm. with 10 or more friends were more likely to combat a major illness. That's right. That? And that was something I didn't know. Yeah, and I, and I think it all has to do with the fact that they can turn to their friends for advice and for support. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really important. Yeah. And yeah. you need that in life too. And by the way, I mentioned um, David and Heather and I said, I hope they're watching. Yeah. So I have my phone with me and David he's, he's just texting. texted us. <laughs> Let's see what he said. <laughs> David said, hey, we're watching. Great job. Heather said, rocking it, girls. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello from vacation land. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> All right. So, but, he, but here's the thing, Selena. <laughs> it, it's hard to make, it can it can be hard to make friends as an adult. For some people, maybe not so much, mm -hmm. but for a lot of people, it's challenging. It's really challenging, especially mm -hmm. if you're older and you move to a new city and you don't have, don't know anybody really, except right. the people that you see at work and that you meet mm -hmm. at work. So what, what do you do? What's what do you the best do? way? All right, well, we've come <laughs> up with some tips for you. If you're looking to make some new friends as, as an adult. Yeah. So how about this? reconnect with old friends. Yeah, and what's interesting is if, if people are watching us right now, if you are new to the Pittsburgh area and, and you're trying to make you know, a good group of friends. It's funny if you, I keep in touch with so many people I went to grade school and high school with on social media mm -hmm. and so many people that a lot of my friends have moved to new cities and they found out that people they went to high school with moved to that same city just by on keeping up just with them on keeping Facebook. up on Facebook yeah. so, so you never know who could be in your you city never know that's that's a great way to mm -hmm. connect I just reconnected with an old friend and we're gonna hang out this weekend on oh, Facebook nice. so that's so that's a great one how about don't be interesting and be interested be I like this so that's one. like listen that's just that basically is. listen to people that's why we were born with one mouth and two ears. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. But I think it's much better to be a listener and to learn and want to know more about the person mm -hmm. than to talk all about yourself. I agree. And then how about this one? Be vulnerable. Like, I mean, you really can't just make friends. No offense, Ron, but by <laughs> talking about the weather all day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's this cold outside. That's Nobody right. wants to be your friend. Nobody is going to want to be your friend. No, but <laughs> um, but yeah. So you kind of have to, you know, open up a little bit and let people, you know, know mm. some things about you that are yeah. not surface. Right? Absolutely, I totally agree with and, that. And how about start a group? Yeah, this this is my favorite one because I'm all into the book club of the month, the wine club. It could be anything, a yoga club, <laughs> whatever you want it right, to be. Right, I agree. And even mm -hmm. my friends, we do like a group text. Yeah. Even that, you know, I mean, Me that's too. a group and we can kind of like check in with each other uh, throughout the day and kind of share mm -hmm. some funny moments. So yeah. that's a lot of fun. And, and I think the last one is just pretty much keep in touch because yeah. for a lot of people, the reason why you might not have any friends is because you didn't keep in well, touch. You don't keep in touch. <laughs> There's also many cool apps too where you could meet people, mm -hmm. meet friends, not just in the dating world, which I think is interesting too. I just but, do. Well, we could talk about this all day. <laughs> we <laughs> could. <laughs> we are just getting started this yeah. hour. So thanks so much for starting your Thursday with us. And it's so cold. So I hope you're at home very warm and snuggled with some hot coffee. But still to come today, meet a junior host for tonight's Free Care Friends, Free Care Fund Benefit Show. And she has a very compelling story about why she wants you to tune into tonight's telethon to help other young patients just like her. 
Also ahead, four million lights, candy coasters, even reindeer, all just an easy sleigh ride away from Pittsburgh. Stay with us to find out about Christmas Candy Lane at Hershey Park coming up. Plus, baby, it's cold outside. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Meteorologist Ron Smiley, he doesn't care though. He is bundled up for ice skating. I can't believe he's out there in this weather. We will check in with him live rinkside for today's chilly forecast. That and more coming up when PTL continues on this Thursday, December 19th, 2019. Thanks for being with us.